Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mundo TV. Today, we're proud to present one more time Liz LaRoquette, who is our beautiful expert on real estate. This time, she's going to be telling us about investment opportunities for family offices in Panama and through real estate. So please remember that if you subscribe to our channel and if, and if you follow us on our social media, you can have access to financing, special promotions, to special promotions, to special property tours. So please don't forget to subscribe. Okay. Hello, welcome back to Mundo TV. Thank you so much, Cecilia, for having me today. Wonderful <laughs> to see you again. Thank you. And well, today um, uh, we would like to discuss uh, investment for family offices Wonderful. interesting topic right <laughs> so, so. <laughs> so firstly i understand that berm does not only have uh, residential properties but also have a co has commercial properties and you know whole apartment blocks that you can use for for family offices to invest can you tell us about this Yes, absolutely. So Panama is a hot place for investors mm -hmm. because the government are doing a lot of incentive, uh, a lot of incentives to, to incentivize foreign companies, foreign family offices to invest in Panama. So there's a few different um, tax free areas of Panama. One of them is called Costa del Este. And now Costa del Este is a special place for multinational companies where they don't have to pay taxes. So huge multinationals from around the world are setting up their corporate offices in Costa del Este. Now, Costa del Este sits 15 minutes from the International Airport of Tucumán and about 15 minutes from downtown Panama City. Costa del Este is one of the first pre-planned communities in Panama. And before it used to be very attractive for wealthy Panamanians to live. And then when the government changed the law and they, they started to um, encourage foreign companies to set up there, that's when there's a new niche market for smaller apartments targeted to these executives with the multinational companies and also office space and commercial space for these, for these, um, these international companies. So one of the top places right now for investment is definitely in this Costa del Este area. Now, Empresas Burn is one of the largest developers in Panama. They've delivered over 8,000 residential apartments. But as you mentioned, they also do focus on commercial and, mm -hmm. um, and office space. So they finished a mall in Costa del Este with the Johns Hopkins Affiliated Hospital attached, which is also being built. And they're doing a few projects right now that have the license for short-term rentals. So for investors right now that are interested in Panama, they, people can actually buy into one of these buildings with the license for short-term rentals buy multiple apartments or, for example, buy a whole floor and get a heavily discounted price. So short-term rentals in the Costa del Este area, you're looking at around a 10% return on investment. And then there's also that possibility of buying a whole floor, getting a lower price, so you've got a nice chunk of equity in the buy. So the two projects worth considering right now in Costa del Este is definitely the Arcadia project, which has broken ground and will be completed in approximately three years. And then there's also the Generation Tower project, will be, which will be completed in about four to five years. So we can definitely discuss bulk discounting for um, multiple apartments in, in those two projects. And there's on-site property management in both buildings, or uh, investors can also set up their own management fund and do the rentals themselves. Why Costa del Este is an interesting area for, for rentals of this type is for, for two main reasons. One of them is definitely renting short term to these executives with multinational companies. And then there's also the opportunity for renting to met for medical tourism. So mm -hmm. Panama is one of the top places in the world for medical tourism. And this new Johns Hopkins affiliated hospital that's also being built by Empresas Burn is going to be generating a lot of business for medical tourism. And ultimately when people come down to get something done, uh, the, to get a, a cosmetic surgery or some other surgery done, they don't want to recover in a hotel. And in Costa del Este right now, there's only one property that does short-term rentals, and that's the Western mm -hmm. Hotel, but it doesn't have a kitchen. So medical mm -hmm. tourism is going to be super popular for rentals uh, because when people are recovering, they can rent um, the Arcadia or the Generation Tower project. The Generation Tower project will also have the independent living capability. So investment groups or the family offices could buy a whole floor, for example, in the independent living um, part of the project 
and then rent the units out through the independent living uh, facility project. So the return on investment for that is around seven to nine percent. So you're looking in Costa del Este for short-term rentals or long-term rentals for independent living, seven to nine percent, which is a great return on investment. And then, like I said, bulk discounts in the buy gives you that nice, great chunk of equity. So that's more for the residential and also for the for the for the, the shorter-term residential piece. If not for commercial leases in Costa del Este. And Presley's Burn have got multiple commercial buildings where they have tenants in place. <laughs> For example, at the moment, there's the Plaza del Este building that has done a 10-year lease with SA Lauder. And the cap rate on that is between is around 65 to 7%. So something like that could also be an interesting investment. Within the portfolio, there's investments from $1 million for $1 million up to about $55 million. So a lot of it really does depend on how much um, these family offices want to invest in Panama. The, okay. the best type of investment right now, though, is one of these fixed leases, long-term leases with one of the large multinationals. So just to give you an idea of the type of people that are renting um, commercial space in Costa del Este, you've got Estee Lauder, you've got Procter & Gamble, you've got, um, you've got Under Armour. Way, way, the cell phone company has just taken up a large portion of the residential of the commercial building in Costa del Este. You've also got Liberty Media has just set up down here. Mm -hmm. Panama's also pushing hard for Amazon to move down. Mm -hmm. to so there's a lot of opportunity. The government are doing a lot to incentivize foreign companies to base in Panama. Right now, there's over 200 large foreign companies that are operating out of Panama. So people like these, uh, Panama is, is attractive for these, these companies, not just for the tax exemptions, but also due to the location of Panama, the, the, the locations of Panama between Central and South America and, and of course with the Panama Canal. So it's, an, it's, an air, it's a hub. Uh, the International Airport of Panama is being expanded at the moment. The first metro line in Central America has been built here. They're now about to do the third line of the metro. That's going to be completed to go from the airport to downtown Panama City. So there's some huge infrastructure projects being done by the government right now in Panama. There's a large uh, convention center that fits uh, 20,000 people that's being completed for the end of 2020 um, on the Amador Causeway. There's also a huge cruise ship terminal that's being built that has the capacity for 7,000 passengers. So the government are incentivizing foreign companies to set up in Panama, and it makes a very interesting place for investors. Great. So I think I think it's safe to say that Panama is growing in, in many levels, right? It's a very good opportunity to invest as soon as possible, right? It's a great place to invest. Mm -hmm. It's low risk and it's US dollars. Mm -hmm. A lot of investors exactly. want to buy something that's in US so that they don't have to be concerned with the exchange rate. And there's commercial properties also. Um, right now, another interesting um, opportunity is to purchase one of the existing hotels. Mm -hmm. There's only one hotel in Costa del Este. Um, in this area that is a hub for multinational companies. Um, it's a 218 room property. That's also available for purchase right now. It would be a great opportunity for family offices. They've had, a, um, they've had occupancy of around 85% midweek. Um, some great numbers, great return on investment. You're looking at around a seven to eight, uh, uh, sorry, a six to seven percent cap rate on that. Okay, uh, great. So uh, let's talk about the Byrne family. I understand that they have been constantly growing for over 30 years, right? That's a lot. Not many, yeah, that's not right. Many, not many people can say that, All right? You know, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the Byrne family, the, the father, it's actually a family run company. The, the father started the business uh, just over 40 years ago. Um, it's a family run company. They've delivered, like I said, over 8,000 apartments. Mm -hmm. um, and right now they are building, they're building um, multiple projects in pre-construction. They're building a new commercial space, like I said, the new John Hopkins Hospital. Um, and they really do have their finger on the pulse. They tend to pick the area that, um, they tend to diversify, but they don't go too far from Panama City because their core is in Panama City. Their workforce is in Panama City. Mm -hmm. The furthest that they do build is one hour from Panama City in the Coronado mm -hmm. and Gorgona areas. They do, there are some fantastic new opportunities that will be coming up towards the end of 2020 and coming into 2021. The government are doing some new incentives for tourism operated businesses. So there will be some interesting opportunities where uh, Empresas Burn will be building some projects that come with 
tax breaks where the project can be purchased at a heavily discounted price and these tax breaks um, can be then resold on to large companies in Panama such as cell phone companies and um, other sorts of, of public and private um, enterprises. So that's another opportunity that the government's working on that we can that we will be heavily involved in that I will abs absolutely uh, fill you in on when we have more information. Perfect. Thank you. I will really appreciate that. So I think it's, it is, from what I'm hearing here, it's, it's safe to say that for a family, for a wealthy family, it is a very good choice to invest in, in a real estate portfolio, right? Because it helps you really, really grow with your wealth in the, in the long term, right? That's right. I mean, right now, people all over the world are looking to diversify their portfolio. <laughs> They're not wanting to be too heavy on, on one thing. So if, if an investor is interested in buying something in US dollars and it not necessarily be in, in the US, the great thing about Panama is it's a very, it's a small country, but it does have so much opportunity due to everything that I've been telling you about the government and multinational companies. Mm -hmm. And so it's possible to buy down here in a market that's not oversaturated. And I think that's very important to keep in mind. Panama is not oversaturated. It's all about finding the right area where there's a niche rental market mm -hmm. and also to buy at a good price. And right now with what everything that's going on in the world, now is the time to get great pricing, but also where developers are being a lot more flexible with their financing terms. It's always great to use other people's money to make money. The mm -hmm. fact that they have OPNs, we love OPNs. The fact that developer, that Empresas Grown offer their own internal financing means that investors don't need to stress about getting financing in Panama. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy to get financing in Panama, okay? And also financing in Panama is, um, local banks here only finance until you're 70 or 75 generally. Mm -hmm. So if you're an investor in your 60s, they're gonna amortize that over that very short period of time. Exactly. So developer financing means there's no pre-approval process. You, a lot of people use it as a bridge loan until they can get their ducks in a row in Panama and get local financing. Mm -hmm. And there's also no prepayment penalty, so it can get paid off at any time. Uh, with the local banks in Panama charge a 2% prepayment penalty. So it's a great opportunity for people that are also waiting to sell real estate in other places. So mm -hmm. they can do developer financing for a few years and then when they sell their property, they can then pay it off. It's a great way to diversify your portfolio it's you're buying in a country that's safe and secure and, and US dollars. It's also a wonderful opportunity for people that are thinking about that plan B for residency and citizenship. So in Panama, if you're an investor, you can invest 350,000 and you can actually buy real estate and become a, a, a permanent resident and get a passport in another country. That's it. There's also another visa in Panama called the Friendly Nations visa. If you, um, if you do apply, if you if you are able to get the Friendly Nations visa based on wherever you're from, then you don't actually need to buy real estate. But for example, in Russia, I know Russians can't get the Friendly Nations visa. So a Russian, for That's example, in Panama, they can do the investor visa. They can invest three hundred fifty thousand in real estate and get permanent residency. So there's some great opportunities. You mentioned something very interesting, which is the situation that we're currently living, right? Which is pretty, you know, stressful. <laughs> you know, we never know uh, what's going to happen tomorrow. So I think uh, my bet and many people's bet is that many people are going to be choosing Panama as a, as a refuge, as, as a, um, you know, as a safe place because of, you know, all the Panama opportunities. What can you tell us about this? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, there's a few different ways that you could look at this. Um, People are worried about what direction the world is going to go. Mm -hmm. Certain people are worried more than others, mm -hmm. right? What I've been hearing a lot of is, is, is people going, well, I'm going to come to Panama because at least I know if things really go dreadful, I've got a country where I can live from the land. Mm -hmm. It's hot around here. Mm -hmm. There's great local produce. The seafood is incredible. Um, it's The country has everything going for it. So people that are worried about to that extreme, you can live in, in Panama very comfortably. Um, and, you know, only time is going to tell, but it is a country where the government, it's a secure government. All eyes are on the canal, <laughs> okay? All eyes are on the canal. The canal is, is always going to be there. And that gives a lot of security for investors. I mean, Panama, the, the growth rate of Panama is extraordinary. Uh, it's around 6% right now. It's growing at a pace that is 
is not too fast that it's unstable. The government is stable. The economy is stable. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also keep in mind, apart from the canal, we have one of the largest copper mines in the world that opened up in Panama um, around two years ago. And this, this mine, it's owned by um, a company called First Quantum, a, a Canadian company, and they're employing tons of people. And that particular mine, they say is going to bring the same amount of money into the economy of Panama as the canal itself. So Panama has some large infrastructure projects going on. Panama is, um, you know, due to its geographical location, it, 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 it really is a great option. And in terms of lifestyle, I mean, this is, you know, it's lower cost of living and there's some great, it's a great plan B destination. Even for people that are not quite sure what the future brings, it's a great plan B. Even setting up tax residency or purchasing real estate down here and getting citizenship uh, and permanent residency. And it could be a place that could be just sitting there and rented out and, and generating income. Exactly. And you know what I also see about Panama is that uh, people are pretty peaceful, especially if you compare it with other places in Latin America, where they are more likely to strike, to riot, you know, and you know, in these times you want to be in a quiet place where you know that, you know, the environment is peaceful, you know what I mean? Yeah, like I said before, the population, the population <laughs> in Panama is only like four and a half million people. Exactly. People are used to foreigners. You never feel like a dollar sign just because you're a foreigner here. You're treated with respect. Uh, there's people from all over the world. It's a very young country. Um, there's people from all over. I mean, uh, Colombia, Venezuela, Spain, they're the three top populations for foreigners, but there's tons of Europeans moving here. A lot of, like I said before, a lot of South Africans are moving here. There's a lot of eyes on Panama because of everything that Panama can offer. And the fact that you can live in Panama for so much, so less expensive than in other countries. And I mean, it's all about like bang for your buck. Uh, you know, the, the lifestyle that you can have here in Panama for such a low price is, is incredible. I wake up every day and I look out at the ocean and, <laughs> and I'm happy. Yeah, what, what a great choice I made, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Well, one last question I want to ask about going back to Bern and the projects. So, um, as far as I understand, Bern also has, has different lands that they can use for future projects, right? So, are there, is there a future where new projects can, you know, exist? Yes, that's right. So, the, the Empresas Bern's development planning model has been based on buying loads of land. I mean, for example, in Costa del Este, mm -hmm. they bought 25% of all of the land in Costa del Este was bought by the family way mm -hmm. back when. And they bought large parcels of land. They've had a lot of vision for the future on the areas that they feel were going to have value. So there's large portions of land that the developer is also selling off um, in very attractive areas, including Costa del Este. Uh, there's a large beachfront portion of land just 15 minutes from Panama City that sits on the beach called Veracruz, which is right next to the Playa Bonita project, which mm -hmm. could be a very interesting place um, to do another project or to purchase the land to sit on it and wait for more appreciation or to purchase and flip. And there's also beachfront land um, in the Coronado and Gorgona areas that are for sale. So, and I mean, less, less attractive, but great investment is also land that's great for warehouses that are out, mm -hmm. that are out by mm -hmm. the international airport. So there's definitely opportunities for land purchase also, and a lot of it just depends on the overall strategy of, of the family offices and whether or not they're wanting something that they can cash flow immediately, if they're wanting just to get that chunk of equity out the gate in the buy, or whether or not they're wanting to actually do some sort of collaboration with a project together. There's different opportunities that we could definitely discuss. Okay, so basically, Panama is the land of opportunities, right? It sure is. <laughs> Okay, Liz, thank you. This has been really priceless. Everything you know, the way you, you, you transfer it to everybody, really, this, it's a pleasure to have you with us. I hope to have you many, many times more. It's my absolute pleasure, Cecilia. <laughs> Always great to see you. And uh, anything at all that you need, I'm here. Oh, please, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Liz. You, see you soon. See you soon. Bye.